Hello, welcome to Let's Play NetHack Fork. Uh, this is Jonadab, and I am going to try doing a Let's Play of NetHack Fork. So I'm going to do it on a public server, so you can see here that I am shelling in SSH to NetHack at hardfought.org. And I'm logging in. Uh, and I'm going to be playing on the public server. I should give a disclaimer here. Even though I'm playing on a public server, NetHack Fork, I'm the primary perpetrator of this variant. So I'm going to be playing my own variant here. Uh, so disclaimer, um, I should theoretically be pretty good at playing this variant since I made it. But um, there are people who are a lot better at it than I am. But I'm going to try playing it anyway. We're going to start a new game for the purpose of the Let's Play. Uh, no, I'm not going to let it pick for me, because for the Let's Play, if I do that, I'll end up playing like a healer or something, which I'm no good at at all. So I'm going to try Barbarian, because Barbarian is relatively easy. And um, I could go with Giant, but Giants have a hard time wearing certain kinds of armor. They do have advantages to compensate. They get 10 extra points of AC, some things like that, um, of defense, I should say. But I'm going to go with Dwarf. Dwarvish Barbarian. A dwarves um, in vanilla NetHack cannot be Barbarians because Barbarians have to be chaotic and Dwarves have to be neutral. But in NetHack Fork, Barbarians are allowed to be any alignment. So I'm going to go with a Dwarvish Barbarian. And here we have the standard introductory text. This is unchanged from Vanilla NetHack. Blah, blah, blah. Go get the Amulet of Yendor, basically. Um, and so we are wielding a two-handed sword named Claymore of Sorrow. Um, that fact that it's named Claymore of Sorrow is doesn't actually mean anything. Um, that happens occasionally in NetHack Fork, the more positively enchanted the weapon is, the more likely that is to happen. Um, and so, uh, when you see one that's named, there's a good chance that it's, but in this case, it's plus zero because it's our starting weapon. Um, and we have an axe, which we could use if we wanted to train for, for, um, uh, for the axe skill, but uh, I think we'll just wait till we get a battle axe for that. We'll use the claymore for now. And um, we're wearing ringmail, which is terrible, so we'll be looking for better armor as soon as possible. Um, okay, our dog just stepped on that leather armor, but that's not actually better, is it? Our defense is three right now. If we wear the leather armor, our defense is two, so it's actually worse. So we're going to drop the leather. Leather armor is okay. Well, no, not really. I was going to say, okay, if you're a spellcaster like a wizard, but even then it's really not. You really want to be... By the way, the traditional at sign, um, I've got show race turned on, which is why I'm in H, lowercase h, which stands for uh, small humanoid, um, because I'm a dwarf. <clears throat> I always turn on show race uh, so that I can remember what race I am. Because uh, my memory is not the best. I would forget things. Uh, I'm going to let my dog kill that. Pick up the food ration, because why not? I can always drop it if I get... Uh, actually, let me go ahead and... Uh, I like to go ahead and visit a level, even if I'm not planning to stay there yet. Uh, because, uh, you'll notice I'm using capital letter movement, I, I hold shift and hit L to move until I stop. Uh, it goes until something interesting happens. It's useful. It saves time, and it's much better than holding down keys in terms of safety. Um, uh, what I was going to say is, I like to go ahead and visit a level even if I'm not ready to stay there yet because then if I end up down there because of a trapdoor or something, um, then I know where the stairs are to get back up.
There are other arguments for it, such as monsters generating at the time you visit the level first, and if your experience level then increases later before you go back there, then the monsters are easier to kill. I don't care as much about that as I do about knowing where the stairs are. That, to me, is the real reason uh, to go ahead and visit levels. Okay, I uh, am going to use my axe, apply, B the axe, chop down this door, and then wield my claymore again because um, it's faster than trying to kick down the door. Um, this is very early in the game here. Why am I? Oh, I'm on a bear trap. There we go. This is very early in the game, and you'll notice that I'm playing somewhat conservatively. I fully explored this level, I think. It's possible there's something down there in the southeast corner, but I'm not going to worry about extensive searching right now. But I, I tend to be a fairly conservative, fairly slow player. Uh, in fact, my fastest ascension is something like 90,000 turns. And experienced players ask me, how do you spend so much time? What do you spend it all doing? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm playing the game. Oh, stop that. Okay. Uh, I'm just not very good at the game, so I'm not very fast. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and come back up here, and let's go ahead and explore over to the east part of the level. One of the reasons I like to go ahead and explore fully every level is because as you get deeper, the levels get a little bit harder. Can I loot that chest? I can. Um, sure, we'll take all of that stuff. The book, I don't think I care about as a barbarian, at least not this early. Um, you can look at the stats in the status area to the right of the... Uh, where it says Jonadab the Lawful Plunderer. That's um, Lawful is my alignment. Plunderer is a rank, which um, if you memorize them all, that'll tell you what experience level you are approximately. You don't need to know that because the status area also explain, also displays your experience level. So I don't know why the ranks, but they're there. They've been there since Vanilla Let Net Hack, and I've never bothered to remove them, um, even though I think they're kind of pointless. But Plunderer is one of the ranks for Barbarian. It's one of the early ranks for Barbarian. So that means I'm a Barbarian. I kind of would like to say Jonadab the Lawful Barbarian there because then I would just know I'm a Barbarian. I can get that information with Control x by pulling up the statistics, which does say roll barbarian, if I really wanted to know that. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, if you look to the right of where it says Jonadab the Plunderer, it will tell you my um, attributes, dexterity, constitution, strength. Uh, those are all pretty good. And then intelligence, wisdom, and charisma are all pretty not very good. That's typical for a barbarian. Uh, and because my intelligence is so low, reading and ca reading books and casting spells is going to be rather impractical for me for quite some time until I can do some alchemy or something to get my stats very much improved. Um, and so I'm not going to bother even picking up books as a rule this early in the game. Good. I found a general store, best kind of shop to find because you can price identify anything. Studded leather armor I think would give me probably the same defense as my ringmail, assuming it's plus zero, um, and would weigh less. So it might be a slight improvement. I have 124 Zork mids and that would cost 23 so that might be worth it not a big deal I want much better armor than that as soon as possible um, anything else here that I want sprigs of wolfsbane yes I'll take that 
just in case I happen to run into any were creatures, werewolves or were rats or anything of that nature, wolfsbane means you can cure it, which is really nice. Enchant weapon. I don't want to enchant the claymore because I want to find an altar and get cleaver. Uh, so I am. It's an artifact battle axe that I can get as a barbarian from my first sacrifice gift. So I'm going to leave the scroll of enchant weapon here for now. I can come back and buy it later. Um, that being priced at 400. Well, my charisma is really the low though. Let me see. Okay, the unlabeled scroll, which would normally be 60, uh, base price of 60, is being charged at a rate of 90, which is 150%, half again. Um, enchant weapon also would normally be 60, and is being charged at 90, so it looks like he's charging me half again. Um, so this is probably an item with markup on it. Because, let me see, I, can't, I should be able to do that in my head because I majored in math in college. And so, well, I mean, okay, granted, college math doesn't have a lot of multiplication and division in it. But uh, still, you'd think as a math major I'd be able to do basic arithmetic. But I'm going to go 400 divided by 1.5. Yeah, see, that's marked up, like I said. Um that's got the one-third markup on it. That's actually a 200 Zorkmid scroll. Um, I could go ahead and mark it as such. Two hundred Zorkmid scrolls are not worth worrying about this early in the game. Um, in fact, most scrolls aren't worth worrying about this early in the game. That's a 100 Zorkmid scroll, which we definitely don't care about this early. Um, a lockpick. I'll take that. What I would really like to do is find a 20 Zork Mid base price scroll, which he'd probably charge me 30 Zork Mids for or more. Um, but he doesn't seem to have any. That would tell me what the scroll of identify is, which is the most important scroll to identify because then you can use it to identify everything else. I would say the scroll of identify is the most important item to identify and the the key reason that price identification in shops is really a big deal is because it lets you bootstrap the identification process. I'm going to settle for the items that I have here for now. Studded leather and a lock pick. I will go ahead and adjust assign the lock pick to K, which stands for key. I always keep my unlocking device. Oh yeah, I have to pay for the wolfsbane. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to find my pet. Hopefully. Yes, find my pet. And drop the leather armor and stand near it and see if I can get the pet to step on it. Yes, good. Thank you, Bernoulli. I'm going to wear the studded leather armor then. That leaves my defense at three, same as it was with the ringmail. Um, but ringmail would rust and the studded leather won't. And additionally, more importantly to me right now, uh, is the weight. Uh, yeah, let me go ahead and eat the lichen corpse because I'm hungry. Um, the reason I chose the Lycan Corpse rather than the food ration um, is because I don't want to end up carrying the Lycan Corpse around forever. Um, old gloves. Let me see if my pet will step on those. Also, let me see if I can get him to kill the grid bugs. Um, pets get more benefit from killing grid bugs than you do because pets get um, experience points every time they kill something more or less irrespective of its level uh, and grid bugs are very low level uh, so really low level things like grid bugs and lichens it's good to let your pet kill them because they get more benefit out of it than you would he doesn't want to step on those gloves I'm going to carry them around anyway 
um, maybe it's a coincidence that he didn't step on them. If I find an altar, I can drop them on the altar and find out for sure if they're cursed. Uh, let me go ahead and move those rocks off the fountain just so I can see the fountain. Ooh, a hardware store. Nice. I already have a lockpick, so I don't need a key. A key is technically better than a lockpick. I'll take the sack unless I find a better bag. Uh, a key is technically better than a lockpick, but right now I don't care about the difference. Um, it has to do with how long it takes to unlock doors, and I, I don't really care because I can chop down doors if I really need to get through in a hurry anywhere but mine town. Um, I could in mine town, but it would be a bad idea. Whereas, uh, blindfold, yeah, I should have one of those too. Do I have enough Zark meds for all this? No, I don't. Um, I'm going to have to pick and choose in a minute here. A magic lamp. I want that, but I don't have enough Zork mids for it. So we're going to be back to this um, shop for sure. Tinning kit is also a useful item. Um, actually, I can buy what I have right now. That whistle is probably a tin whistle. I could get my pet to steal things, but it's not worth messing with for me. I, I feel like I'd rather just come back and buy it later. It's easier. Um, let me eat some food. Okay, so now what I want to do is find an open area where I can get my pet. This is as good an area as any uh, to tell me whether that blindfold is safe, and that's a yes, he stepped on that right away. Was there another item? Oh, apply, oh. The sack, it doesn't really matter. I think they're always generated uncursed anyway, but even so, uh, it's not a bag of holding, so it wouldn't have any particularly bad effects if cursed, so I don't care. Uh, I'll go ahead and put that, my one gold piece in the bag, the scrolls in the bag. Uh, scrolls you put in the bag so that they don't get damaged, for example, by fire, which would burn them. Um, I don't have anything else I need to put in the bag. Uh, books would also go in the bag, but as a barbarian, I'm not going to be carrying a lot of books. Uh, the blindfold. Can I get the pet to step on the blindfold? Yes, he did. Oh, I, he already had. I knew that. So we'll assign that to... Um, Z was an arbitrary choice of letter to put blindfold on. Um, I think I just happened to have a blindfold on that letter one time. and uh, and But I like to have certain um, inventory letters for certain things because it allows me to use muscle memory for a lot of actions. So I always put my bag on B and my key on K and my whistle on W and so on. So you'll see me adjusting things as I get them so that they're on my letters that I'm used to. It doesn't really matter what the letters are. The point is, that's not what I want. Uh, the point is that you know what letter it is and you're used to it. I'm gonna go ahead and eat the coyote corpse, even though that's gonna make me a little bit bloated. Put the scroll in a bag and the gold. Uh, potions are another thing that's good to put in a bag, come to think of it, because they can freeze and shatter. Leather gloves. Leather gloves don't have any magical properties, but they are still good to have. Uh, it's much better than having no gloves uh, because it means you don't automatically touch everything you pick up, which is relevant, for instance, if there's a cockatrice corpse or something. Um, but also, every piece of armor you can have protects you a little, although I think at plus zero leather gloves don't do very much in that regard. 
but uh, but nonetheless potions are good to put in your sack oh okay probably over here notice when I search I'm using a numeric prefix um, that is safer than holding down a key uh, and more convenient than tapping a key like a bunch of times uh, and it'll stop automatically when you find something uh, or when it runs out of that number of turns the numeric prefix is really nice you can use it for almost any action uh, in NetHack 4 and therefore also in Fork um, the uh, name of this variant NetHack Fork is a pun because it's a, a fork of NetHack 4 so fork f-o-u-r-k yeah it's a pun um, and if you don't like puns NetHack is the wrong game for you I should be identifying these wands now in any other variant I would engrave Elbereth here uh, because it would exercise wisdom but in NetHack Fork it doesn't um, wisdom I didn't want wisdom to be as easy to exercise in fork because it determines your rate at which your power regenerates which is relevant for spellcasters of course that's irrelevant for barbarians but anyway I didn't want wisdom to be easy to exercise so Elbereth no longer exercises it so the incentive to engrave Elbereth isn't there additionally there's a disincentive because of um, one of the nerfs I did to Elbereth, um, which is still in, um, before 3.6 came along, um, when 3.6 came along, uh, it introduced some Elbereth nerfs, um, some of which in 3.6.0 I disagreed with, but those have been backed out for 3.6.1, and the way 3.6.1 handles it is pretty decent, and so at some point, I will probably, probably when I rebase, which I will do eventually, I will probably, I'm not going to rebase on 3.6, I'm going to rebase on Fickhack. But when I rebase, um, I will probably um, not bother to bring my Elbereth nerfs over. I'll go with different Elbereth nerfs based on what's in 3.6. But for now, I don't want to engrave Elbereth because it'll make my hands cramp up if I do it too many times. So I'm going to engrave X, which doesn't break literacy conduct, but also doesn't cause any hand cramping. And then when I have that engraved, uh, the reason for engraving something in the dust with your finger before you engrave with a wand to test it is because if it's a wand of, say, polymorph, uh, it will change the engraving. And if it's a wand of... Uh, for example, teleportation, it'll make the engraving disappear, or cancellation will also make the engraving disappear, or I think invisibility maybe. Uh, so I'm going to engrave with this tin wand. I'm going to engrave X again. Okay, nothing happened. So I'm going to zap the tin wand at myself. Still nothing happened. So I'm going to name that one. The ten wand. All I'm going to call it actually. All ten wands. Ten hard to identify. And uh, wands that are hard to identify are not important to identify. Um, it could be a wand of nothing, or a wand of locking, or one of several other completely unimportant wands. So I'm going to now try the iridium wand. Huh. Zap that at myself. And that also does nothing. Not such good luck with the wands today. Because those are not very useful wands, the ones that are hard to ID. But it is what it is. Uh, this being NetHack, there will be plenty more opportunities to acquire items. How long have I been streaming? I didn't take note, of, or not streaming, recording. I didn't take note of the time. Let's keep going a little more here. Uh, this is just a shaped room. You will run into those occasionally in Fork. 
It's something that I added actually pretty early in development of the variant. It's been around for a long time now. Um, is that rooms can sometimes be a shape other than rectangular. And having a pillar out of the middle is one of those possibilities. Ooh, another sprig of wolfsbane. Now I have, what, three? That's more than I'll need, but okay. Not going to turn it down. Okay, that's just a door to nowhere, which happens sometimes. Uh, the level generation in NetHack um, tries. That's the entrance to the Gnomish Mines. You can see that in Fork, because it's derived from NetHack 4, which does this, um, in NetHack 4 and variants of it, you can tell the difference between a regular stair and a branch stair. You'll see that the color there is yellow instead of white, and it's underlined. Okay. So that is a branch stair, and that's the stair to the Gnomish Mines. And I don't want to go into the Gnomish Mines yet. Well, you know what? As a barbarian, I could. I'm t I'm, as a barbarian, I'm buff enough. I'm a, a melee-oriented character, and I got... Uh, let me see. How many hit points do I have? 40 hit points already at experience level 3. Um, so I actually could... go into the mines if I wanted to, but I think I don't want to. I think I'd rather make for Sokoban. Um, now let's go ahead and explore this level. Ooh, nice. A general store. I am getting pretty lucky with the shops this time. I don't want to buy anything here, though, because I want to go back and buy that magic lamp when I have enough gold for it. Which right now I only have 33. I would need, what was it, 75, I think, to buy the magic lamp. So uh, let's just go ahead and continue on. As you go deeper into the dungeon, gold becomes more and more plentiful until it gets to the point where you don't bother to pick it up because you can't carry all that. Gold weighs very little compared to other objects. I think it takes 10 gold pieces to equal one weight unit, something like that. Uh, so it weighs next to nothing, and yet, because there is so much of it, it gets to the point where you don't want to carry it at all. Okay, here's why I wanted lockpicks. Why I bought those early on when I had the chance. Uh, because um, often you'll find locked chests or boxes, and they may contain rather useful objects. That amulet could be really nice, depending on what it is. I want to find out if my pet will uh, step on it or not. I'm going to put the, the scroll and the potions away in my bag. And the amulet could also be very dangerous, which is why I'm waiting for my pet to step on it. Because a cursed equipment you can't take off. That's true in all versions of NetHack. Uh, most roguelikes, in fact. Uh, you can't easily unequip cursed items. And, um, and so you don't want to equip them if they could be bad to have stuck to you for a long time. And there are a couple of amulets in NetHack that you wouldn't want to be stuck with for a long time. The worst uh, to be stuck with is the Amulet of Strangulation, which will actually kill you in a small number of turns. I think three or five or something. Not very many turns. That's already unlocked. And so uh, you don't want to try on amulets without knowing if they might be cursed. Drop the spell book. I don't want to carry it around. They're heavy. And I don't need it. Um, if I get to the point where I want spell books, or think I can use spell books more to the point, I will uh, come back and make a tour through the dungeon and pick up spell books that I see, which is why I went ahead and took that out of the chest and laid it on the ground so that it'll be easy to see if I 
happen to come back looking for spellbooks. That probably won't happen because as a barbarian, by the time I get my intelligence to the point where I could read spellbooks, it will probably be late enough in the game that I just don't care about them. But you never know. So I went ahead and took it out of the chest so that if I do come back looking for them, I can find it easily. That gives me, I have enough gold now to go back up and buy that lamp. I'm going to use the travel command, uh, which is very convenient for moving around explored levels. I just hit the underscore for travel, and then I say uh, up, well, less than, which means up, uh, to go to the staircase and hit uh, period to select it. Um, you can select arbitrary, oh, a jitterbug. Notice how it swaps positions with me when I hit it. Um, you can use travel to get to any arbitrary place. You can move your cursor around in the usual way uh, to select a location. But going to the stairs is particularly common, so there's a shortcut for it. You can also go to other dungeon features by using their symbol. So like if there's an uh, altar on the level, which is an underscore, I could hit underscore to go to the altar. Um, ah, I'm hungry. Come on, Bernoulli. Uh, where was the shop with the lamp? There was the hardware store. Oh, level three, one down. Back here, okay. By the way, that's a feature that all variants of NetHack have these days. Um, number overview shows you an overview of the dungeon. It was a community patch a while back, and uh, ironically, the dev team had added it to their private repo before any of the other variants uh, incorporated it. But nobody knew about it because the dev team um, kept their private repo, repo private at that time. Uh, they have a public repository now, but at that time they did not. And so until 3.6 was released, well, no, actually it was before that, until the, the leak where the so-called 3.5 code that wasn't an actual 3.5 release uh, became public. Until then, nobody knew that 3.6 was going to have that patch. Let me get my gold out, pay for the magic lamp. Um, you'll notice that I'm not letting my pet into the shop. Some players love to have pets in the shop because they can steal things for you. Um, but I have on a number of occasions had a really annoying time trying to get my pet back out of a shop and it was so excited about picking up all the objects, wonderful objects I can pick up and bring and drop by your feet, that it uh, would, uh, for hundreds and hundreds of turns, just uh, stay in the shop picking up objects. And I, got, I get very annoyed. I don't have a lot of patience for waiting around for things like that. I'll just unlock that, and then I won't have to deal with it anymore. Um, and so... I. I I have patience for some things that other people don't have patience for, but there's some stuff, and babysitting a pet just bugs me. So, um, yeah, I don't want to hit the acid blob because I don't want to corrode my weapon. So I'm going to see if I can go around it. Yeah. Uh, and so I lock my pets out of shops and don't let them in because that way I don't have trouble getting them back out. Because unlike anywhere else in the dungeon, you cannot displace your pet out of the door of a shop to get it out of the shop. The game won't let you. Let me move that boulder before somebody steps. Yeah, Bernoulli triggered and he would have probably died. Um... Uh, 
because that was a rolling boulder trap. Uh, but I had moved the boulder, so it was okay. Alright, I don't have a pickaxe, so I can't destroy that boulder. But I'm sure there's a door up here somewhere, yes. Okay. Tens. Okay, got stomach acid for meeting the graves, but it was worth it. Okay, closet. I'm at experience level five. Good. Uh, let me see here. What have I got? What do I need to do to kill that? floating eye. I would like to have telepathy which you can get from eating a floating eye corpse. But I don't want to hit the floating eye. It's not as dangerous, although I'm at half health, so it is just about as dangerous as in vanilla. If I were at full health, it wouldn't be as dangerous as in vanilla. Uh, in vanilla, what floating eyes do is if you hit them, they paralyze you for like a billion turns. And then some newt or something walks from three quarters of the way around the level and comes and taps you to death uh, while you're paralyzed and can't do anything. If combat would have a chance of waking you up each hit, it would be a lot less dangerous, especially on early levels, but it doesn't. So um, in uh, NetHack 4, um, the NetHack 4 developer, Alex Smith, AIS 523, uh, said, well, that's a user interface screw, um, meaning um, it only happens if you actually hit the eye. And so just don't do that. And experienced players don't hit floating eyes. And so he said, well, so there's this argument called the interhack argument. Interhack was um, a UI wrapper for NetHack 3 that you would um, start up interhack and then play nethack inside of it and it provided some user interface improvements by wrapping itself around the game and the game itself was unchanged but interhack wouldn't let you do certain things or would keep track of certain things for you um, and uh, the argument that the nethack 4 development philosophy had was if interhack can prevent you from doing a thing, then it shouldn't be a thing. If interhack can protect, protect if a you if a wrapper like that, a user interface wrapper can protect you from a certain feature, then it's just a user interface screw. It's not an actual game feature, and it shouldn't be in the game. So floating eyes in NetHack 4 don't do that. Instead, what they do is you're not allowed to hit them at all, unless you have protection from gazes because it's a gaze um, a um, defensive passive gaze attack is what they have that and uh, so in NetHack 4 um, the floating eyes gaze disturbs your aim and you miss and you can't hit it in melee um, you have to use ranged attacks against it um, I didn't like that either uh, because it um, it takes away the typo death, which was the complaint and the reason why NetHack 4 did that. It takes away the typo death, but it makes floating eyes boring, really boring, like totally uninteresting. Uh, and so I said they should be at least somewhat dangerous somehow. Um, and they are meant in vanilla. Uh, to teach players not to just mindlessly whack everything without looking up what it is, uh, which is a useful thing for players to learn. Uh, and so what I did is I made them um, do a thing called vicarious suffering. I'm going to wear these iron shoes. There we go. That'll improve my defense. It's now 6. I want to get it up to 10. By the way, in vanilla net hack, the defense starts at 
um, 10 and counts down so you want to get it down to 0 and below um, which is really unintuitive for players who aren't familiar with it and so NetHack 4 changed that defense starts at 0 and counts up which makes more sense to everyone who is not already familiar <laughs> with uh, with it counting backwards <laughs> um, experienced NetHack players sometimes complain about that change but it's a lot better for um, for new players uh, and it doesn't take very long to get used to it uh, FICHACK actually has an option where you can turn on traditional AC display if you want and so NetHack Fork will eventually have that when I rebase uh, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet okay octagonal amulet I want my pet to step on the amulet if possible so I can find out yes okay the octagonal amulet is not cursed because my pet not only stepped on it but picked it up that's like even more approval why are there so many monsters there must be a throne room on this level okay I'm gonna wear that amulet there we go okay what was I talking about oh floating eyes so anyway in NetHack fork what floating eyes do uh, is you experience vicarious suffering as you look into their poor pitiful eye when they hurt you hurt with them um, and they never do your whole max hit points of damage in one go so accidentally typoing into them once doesn't kill you ever unless you're already low on hit points uh, accidentally typing typoing into them once it, it won't won't kill you from full health but um, but if you whack them repeatedly it definitely can kill you so if you're going around leaning on keys they're very dangerous oh good a scroll of identify um, when you see a scroll of identify in a shop in NetHack 4 it's automatically identified because it's a unique price item and items that are unique in their price bracket within their item class like a scroll that's the only scroll that's that price or a book that's the only book that's that price there's no such thing as a book that's the only book that's that price but um, something like that uh, uh, if there were a potion that were the only potion that were that price uh, something like that when you see it in a shop it's automatically identified so um, because you can deduce its identity by the price and so it autom the game automatically marks it for you this again is on the inner hack argument uh, where um, a, a, a spoiled player knows that that's what that is so we might as well go ahead and mark it so scrolls of identify are now identified I know what they are which is a good thing oh a large mimic good I killed it um, so that means and right now I don't have enough money to start buying a whole ton of scrolls I need to eat something weak from hunger um, but it will become important later that I know what the scroll of identify is when I get ready to start identifying stuff uh, the scroll of identify is the most important way of doing that in the early game later you might get the spell of identify although as a barbarian I probably won't see if the dog will step on any of that uh, for example if he steps on that other pair of iron shoes I will try them on they're the same as the ones I had so no improvement there but it was worth trying uh, you never know when you're gonna find a pair that's like plus four or something which would be a huge improvement to your defense um, 
An orcish spear named Spear of Integrity. That may be well positively enchanted. Uh, so I'm going to pick it up and stash it. Okay, that is way too much for me to carry around, but I'm going to pet test it. One of the most important things in NetHack is to try to get better equipment. Um, the spear is probably positively enchanted. Oh, okay, he moved this, so I know that's... All right, I need to drop something. Let's go up to this level. And drop all my potions here by the stairs. Um, nothing happens on levels you're not on in NetHack. Uh, so if I leave them by the stairs so that as soon as I return to the level, they're there and I can pick them up or do something with them or guard them or whatever, then monsters won't mess with them. So that allows me to get them out of my inventory, uh, which recovers the weight that they were, because I can only carry so much. Uh, later, I'll be able to carry more through a variety of means. Uh, either by having uh, a bag of holding uh, or by simply having a higher carry capacity, which could happen if I improve my strength and constitution. Although my constitution is already 19, which is great, and my strength is 17, which isn't bad at all. Uh, one of the reasons my constitution is so good is because I'm both a barbarian and a dwarf, both of which are good for constitution. In vanilla net hack, um, being a dwarf would only be relevant for the maximum my constitution could reach. Uh, my starting constitution would be unaffected by that, but in net hack fork, both your race and your role are relevant uh, for your starting attribute values and also for the caps. Um. Shrieker corpse, okay. Uh, the green persimmon uh, that is probably my fruit name. Yeah, there you see under personalization at the bottom of the game options, uh, right before it goes into birth options, you'll see personalization, why fruit, green persimmon. Uh, people set fruit name, it's an option in NetHack, and people set it to all kinds of silly things. Uh, slice of pizza, or uh, uh, much sillier things than slice of pizza sometimes. Uh, I just have green persimmon. Uh, I I set it to something different on every server and every variant on every server. So uh, you never know what my fruit name is going to be. But it's usually something ridiculous like mustard seed or side of rhino or in this case just green persimmon which isn't all that ridiculous but whatever. Okay, I guess we're ready to go down to the next level. Although this is starting to get... I need to get a ranged attack so that I can deal with that floating eye. I could use the spear. That worked, but the floating eye didn't leave a corpse. Yeah, I don't care about any of that junk. 
And where's Bernoulli? Oh, I should hit my whistle. Nope, it's a tin whistle. Uh, and I could carry it around just because tin whistles are lightweight tools and that makes them good poly fodder. But it's going to be a long time before I uh, even think about polypiling probably. So I don't care right now. I'm just going to leave it. can always pick it up later. Oh, a unicorn. I'm not ready to fight a unicorn. I don't have enough hit points to fight a unicorn. Fortunately, you don't have to fight unicorns because they will stay... Uh, a knight's move away from you generally uh, so you can usually avoid fighting unicorns there are certain rare situations where they'll corner you but uh, usually you can just not fight them I would like to have the unicorn horn but I don't have enough hit points to fight a unicorn I need to gain some levels first. Uh, I don't have to fight a horse. I will just throw a lycan corpse at the, horse, cor at the horse and tame it. Uh, let me see. I'll name the horse. I will probably not try to keep that horse for very long as my pet. Uh, because it's an herbivore and they're just a pain to keep alive, uh, they, they keep starving to death. Um, and uh, what will happen though is I'll probably end up just not even keeping it with me on the level. And uh, that way it won't starve, it'll just go feral. <laughs> Which is fine. It didn't kill me, that's why I tamed it, so it wouldn't kill me. I don't actually need it for a pet. Uh, I'm happy with the dog for a pet. Uh, until I find an altar, and then I don't care about a pet at all. Okay, take those out. Drop the spell book. Ooh, a soldier ant. Um, yeah. I'm in trouble. Um... I'm going to write Elbereth in the dust. Oh, the horse got killed. Soldier ants are bad news. I'll tell you what. They're dangerous. You'll notice that I am not writing Elbereth again. Uh, experienced NetHack players might wonder about that. This is NetHack Fork. Um, one of the nerfs that I did to Elbereth is that Writing it multiple times doesn't help you any more than writing it once. Um, also, it won't decay as quickly. Assuming I'm not fighting, which I'm not. I'm just sitting here and letting my dog fight. Um, although I don't know if my dog can take the soldier ant. Wait, he's still a puppy? I have not let him kill nearly enough things. I should have let him kill more things. Um, but I'm just trying to get enough hit points uh, that I can safely escape, honestly. Uh, and I could pray, uh, but Elbereth is going to do this for me. Uh, because it doesn't decay nearly as badly in NetHack Fork as it does in 3.4 point anything, or 3.6 for that matter. Actually, in 3.6 it's worse than in 3.4. Uh, that's uh, something I disagree with, uh, one of the changes they made that I disagree with. Um, because uh, having it decay constantly just encourages the player to write it a lot of times. And that's tedious. And I don't like encouraging tedium. Okay, we're going to flee now. My dog will follow me down the corridor. Pick up a lizard corpse. Sure, why not? Lizard corpses are good to have. Uh, you only need a couple of them. Uh, actually, one will usually... Whoa, 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 soldier ant. This isn't guaranteed the second time. I'm going to pray. Okay, that... Um, I hated having to resort to that, but I didn't have a lot of options. 
Dang. Wish I had a uh, stethoscope. I might die here. No, I didn't die. I killed the soldier ant. Okay, good. I'm still in trouble. And I died. I did die. Okay. Um, I died. So that will be the end of the episode then. And we will start a new game next time. Um, I had intended to go much longer than that. But sometimes you die. It is a roguelike game. And uh, death does happen. So we will start a new game next time. Uh, probably another Barbarian, but we'll see. Okay, now, where did I put that mouse? So I can get to the uh, recording software and tell it to stop. See you next time.